Okay. All right. Well, my name is Brian Ruth. I'm a software engineer at Garmin, and I'm going to be talking about drinking from the fire hose, keeping up with the ever-evolving landscape of C++. So, uh, things have changed in technology since I started as a professional programmer about a decade and a half ago. Uh, drastically. Not only has it become part of everyone's daily lives, even more so now, but uh, the languages and technologies and tools that we use to develop this technology has changed drastically as well. And C++ is no exception. So when I started out, C++ 98 was state of the art and almost 760 pages in that standard. And uh, as you saw, 03, okay, 11, 14, 17, and now the latest standard of 20 is almost 1,800 pages. So as somebody who is just a programmer who works on projects for a company, not necessarily a maintainer or standards committee member, uh, how do you go about keeping up with this? How do you know what the current best practices are, what you're, you need to use in your project? What should you stop using in your project? Well, I'm going to share a few tips to uh, kind of help me uh, get through this, but by far, this is not the most exhaustive list. So first of all is you got to come to terms with you don't have to know everything. As a senior engineer, part of my job is teaching people about C++, how to use the code, how to do things, the best way to do things. And from time to time, you start getting this imposter syndrome of, oh, man, I, <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I, don't, I don't know about those things. And nothing is more humbling than sitting in a room or nowadays virtual room with a whole bunch of junior engineers trying to teach them how to do something, spend 15, 20 minutes describing the what's and why's and how's, only at the end to have one of them raise their hand and, and say, well, why didn't you try doing this other thing? It's so much easier and have them be right. If you just kind of internalize that you're, you don't have to know everything, it's okay to, to ask questions and to not know, you'll open yourself up to, to learn from many different people and places. But one of the problems with any industry or hobby or technology is things have names. And those names exist to express very complicated uh, idioms or terms or ideas in a very short, concise manner. So in order to look things up, and you need to know what they're called. And C++ has its share of weird names, RAII, CRTP, uh, RVO, and Safine, to name a few. But you don't necessarily need to know, this, you know the details or the, the underlying definition in its entirety of all of these things. Simply just knowing the name of something is going to be enough. Take Safine, for example. You don't need to know what it stands for or exactly how it implements everything. But being able to know that it has something to do with templates, if the compiler uh, sees an error, did a compilation, I mean, that should be enough to you into Google, Stack Overflow, or be able to ask questions and be able to get out what that stuff actually means. But with everything coming in, how do you know what name you need to know? So for this, you got to find a reliable filter. For every little esoteric corner of every technology or every single hobby, there is somebody who is shouldered in that little thing, and, and they were just itching to tell you about it. So take advantage of their enthusiasm. So things like podcasts, conferences like this, like take a look what the people at the conferences are talking about. That's give you a pretty good idea of what other people think are the most important things coming to the language. And don't feel that you need to keep up with this. Like if, if you poke, poke into Slack, you know, once every couple of weeks, read about 20 messages and pop out, that's good. You don't have to, to be there every day monitoring every single DM or message. Meetups, books, blogs, mailings, there's just an infinite way to go about finding a reliable filter. And just reading about these things and watching the videos, that's, that's one way for you to be informed. But until you really like teach other people, switch the flip the script and start trying to describe what you know how you know it to someone else whether it's in a conference like this a uh, local meetup group trainings at work that's when you really kind of have to start articulating what you know and how you know it and you know if you if you're not up for talking to someone in public try writing it down for yourself i mean odds are you're probably going to forget about what you're learning right now eventually anyway so if you try and externalize that information not only will you understand it better now, but you'll be able to help yourself out in the future. So summarize, accept not knowing, know the true names of things, apply some filters, and teach. Thanks.